Hello students and welcome back. In today's lecture, we will talk more about securitization. How the process of securitization works, what are the various parties involved in the process of securitization and what are the roles that these parties play. When assets are securitized, several legal and regulatory conditions must be satisfied. A number of parties participate in this process to facilitate the transaction and ensure that these conditions are met. In today's lecture, I will be describing a typical securitization through the help of an example. Through this example, I will talk about the various parties involved in the securitization process, why they indulge in securitization and what are the benefits that they achieve. You will also see how these parties perform their respective roles. Through the example, we will also discuss the various structures of securitization such as time tranching and credit tranching. So let's start with the example of securitization. Let's assume that there is a hypothetical company by the name of Medicub. Medicub is the manufacturer of medical equipment and its medical equipment typically ranges from $50,000 to $300,000. The majority of Medicub sales are made through loans granted by the company to its customers. And the medical equipment sold serves as collateral to these loans. Let's also assume that the loans are for a typical duration of five years in which the loans are fully amortized. That means through equal monthly installments comprising of the interest and the principal over a period of 60 installments, that is 12 months into 5 years, the company is able to recover the complete cost of the equipment. The credit department in Medicube usually takes the decision of whether or not to extend a loan to a particular customer. It also services these loans. Loan servicing refers to administering any aspect of the loan including collecting payments from the borrowers, notifying borrowers who may be delinquent, and recovering and disposing of the medical equipment, that is the collateral, in case the customer does not make the scheduled payments at a specific time. Although in usual cases, the servicer of the loan need not be the originator of these loans, but in this example, for simplicity, the originator is also the servicer. Now let's talk about a situation which will tell us why the need of securitization arises. Let's say that Medicube wants to expand and is planning to set up a new manufacturing unit. For this purpose, Medicube needs additional funds in the tune of $200 million. Let's also assume that Medicube has the same amount, that is $200 million in loans sitting on its balance sheet as assets, that is debtors, who have to pay for the medical equipment that has been sold in the past. Let's also say that the treasurer of Medicube is fully aware of securitization process and also knows the benefits of securitization. So while Medicube has various options of raising these funds, it can raise further equity, it can issue bonds, it could also take a long-term loan. However, after careful scrutiny, the treasurer realizes that securitization is going to be the cheapest method of funding. So the treasurer decides to raise $200 million in funds by securitizing these loans which are sitting on its balance sheet as assets. To do so, Medicube sets up a separate legal entity called Medical Equipment Trust to which it sells off its loans on medical equipment. Such a legal entity can also be referred to as a special purpose entity, a special purpose vehicle or even a special purpose company. The legal form of a special purpose entity usually varies by jurisdiction. However, in most of the cases, the ultimate owner of the loans becomes the trust, that is the special purpose entity. It is legally independent and considered as bankruptcy remote from the seller of the loans, that is Medicube in this case. Setting up a separate legal entity ensures that if in future Medicube files for bankruptcy, then Medical Equipment Trust, which has issued the asset-backed securities based on the loans that it has purchased from Medicube, will be bankruptcy remote and the creditors of Medicube will not have any legal claims on them. Let me make you better understand this theory through a diagram. Let's say that this is Medicube, which is our manufacturer in medical equipment. As I mentioned to you previously, 
Medicube sells its medical equipment to its customers, which is financed by a loan. And in a regular scenario, where securitization is not done, the customers will be making monthly payments and whatever balance amount of loan is there will be sitting on the asset side of the balance sheet of Medicube. However, now that Medicube has decided to securitize these loans, it will be selling these loans to a special purpose entity and in our case, it is the Medical Equipment Trust. Now, because this is a sale to a separate legal entity, we know that these loans have a value of $200 million. That means Medical Equipment Trust must pay $200 million to Medicube. But how will this trust raise the money? Medical Equipment Trust will be issuing bonds to investors who would like to invest in asset-backed securities. These bonds, which are issued by Medical Equipment Trust, are asset-backed securities, which are backed by these loans on medical equipment. These loans, which are now owned by the Medical Equipment Trust. When the investors invest in these bonds, they will be making a payment for these bonds to the Medical Equipment Trust. Let's for simplicity assume that all the bonds have been sold and Medical Equipment Trust from its investors has received $200 million. Now this is the cash that the Medical Equipment Trust will be paying to Medicube. Now it does appear that the picture is almost complete, but we should not forget that Medical Equipment Trust must service these bonds. That is, it must make timely payments of interest and principal when the bond becomes due for maturity. Now, from where will Medical Equipment Trust make these payments for interest and principal? Because the $200 million that it had received from its investors, it has already paid to Medicube. Well, let's not forget the customers who still have to make the installments of monthly payments against their loans. Now, Medical Equipment Trust will be servicing these loans and it will be directly collecting the installments from the customers. Medical Equipment Trust will be servicing these loans and it will directly be collecting the payment of all the installments from the customers. It will also be using this money that it collects as installments to make the timely interest payments to its investors. Well, this is what completes the picture. I hope the process of securitization is crystal clear to you now. In the next lecture, we'll go into more detail on the roles and responsibilities of all of these participants in a securitization process. Thank you very much. I will look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.